February here at Distortions Unlimited, and with snow on the ground, we're busy getting a big run of pumpkin witches painted and ready to ship. Mondo, I don't know if we're gonna make that 20 minutes. We're not half done, are we? There's a lot of steps that go into making a Halloween prop, from the design to the sculpture, mold making, pouring, pulling, cutting, painting, finishing, just to name a few. We released our pumpkin witch in January 2023 on our website, and it was popular right from the beginning. This is our pumpkin witch, new for 2023. She comes with these, these gordy warts and things that are kind of orange, and then she slow fades into a, a fleshy green. And her legs are painted also, you know, the gnarly feet, the little lit pumpkin. We then took the pumpkin witch along with many of our other animatronics and props to the Trans World Halloween show and featured it in a spooky scene with other pumpkin props and our new haunted tree. The development of a prop character is often a team effort. Crew members Fernando and Moan originally came up with the idea for the Pumpkin Witch and brought it to Ed and Marsha. So tell me the story of the idea for the Pumpkin Witch. People just love pumpkins and we need more female characters, you know? <laughs> so I was like, hmm. I mean, I follow this page on Facebook, Distortions Unlimited Collectors. And everybody's asking about the the other witch that we already have to make it a legend. What if we gave them something new, like a pumpkin witch? When he said that, we're just like, great idea. That 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 goes perfect with our pumpkin. <laughs> and it was. It was a great idea. Ed said he was a little bit like he wasn't sure about that, but then Tom did some designs and she kind of evolved. And you know, their thought was, you know, kind of a, a witchy character where the, the cranium is turning into a pumpkin. And uh, yeah, I, that was one of the first things that we drew this year. And I remember thinking, well, that is kind of clever, but probably not. And then Tom drew it and Marsha and I instantly, yeah, we gotta do that. Because that, that was a cool design. I've even, People have even said it's their favorite witch. After Tom finished the design drawing and it was approved, he began work on the sculpture. With lots of feedback from Ed and Marsha, Tom took the sculpture from rough to finer and finer detail until the piece was finished and ready to mold. Do you like the smell of latex? Well, I just smell a lot the latest, like a lot of people saying. Some people come and say, oh, that's so strong, my eyes. Huh? Like, to me, it's normal now. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess I got used to it after 20 years. <laughs> Mondo first pours liquid latex into the plaster mold, lets it sit for about 30 minutes, and then sucks the remaining latex out back into the tank. The thin layer that remains in the plaster mold will dry and that becomes the latex skin of the finished prop. So he then foams the piece and then it's ready to pull. You're good to hear that. Oh, okay, it's out. It's out. I have 29 out here right now. They're pretty straight cut. There's one of our simpler ones. Lorena has plenty of pumpkin witch props cut and ready for the next paint run. But Ed's working hard trying to get the current pieces done and out of paint so we can get the pumpkin witches in and based before the day's over. So what are we doing in here now? Well, we are madly trying to finish this run because it's a hodgepodge run, which I hate hodgepodge runs because it's very unproductive and um, irritating. So we had this room filled with a little of this and a little of that. So we're trying to finish that up quick and get the pumpkin witches in here. I don't think people realize how labor intensive this stuff is. There's so many steps.
what slowly going insane looks and sounds like. You have this relationship with monsters all these years and they they take a toll on your your noodle. Somebody's gonna be very happy. Finally the paint room's empty and ready for the pumpkin witches. Ed and Tom prepare the witches for paint, gluing on the hands and dremeling. The first paint step is basing the witches. The base job on the witches involves multiple different colors. Next, rub off is sprayed onto the props. When this is wiped off, it leaves darkness in the details. It shows what's going on sculpturally and adds depth to it. It's time to do some finishing paint touches. One of the things I love on this is eye placement. Because if you put her hand out like this, she's pointing the way and then she's like, she's looking over at you. But the fact she's not turning her head, it's kind of like she's got an attitude, get in there. You know? like get in my pot or something. I don't know what she's saying, but it's, it adds a lot of personality. Is this the greatest monster you've ever made? Yes. Is this the greatest place to work in the world? Yes. Are you willing to work overtime for free? No. Oh, Tom, now just when you were on a roll. I think the paint job is actually done as of right now on all of these. Do you think the run went pretty well overall? Oh, yeah. No, it went good. Your pumpkin witch is now ready to box and fly off to its new home.